Hey everyone, it's that time, it's finally here, it's finally bottled, finally kegged, uh, finally released to the public. Of course, you can tell from the title, we're looking at the Robert Ryan Stone Rip Current r r Coconut IPA. I'm actually drinking this out of the bottle for the first time. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I, I, I don't even think I've even read all, everything on the back yet, but... Uh, you know, a little different format this year for the Stone HA, or the Stone the Collaboration beers. Uh, you know, they have this sort of like hop crest they're using on the bottle. Uh, a little different than years past, but uh, still very cool nonetheless. And uh, they actually have a, a t-shirt with this logo on the front that they made for us. And I think the the front has something like the gargoyle up here. Um so, on to the beer. Um, if you've been following along, I've been talking about this beer since, I believe, late 2012, if not early 2013, is I think when I started talking about it through Homebrew Wednesday videos and mentioning it, and I even did a, a post-rally uh, uh, video on me brewing it. Give me some hints on like, how, how to do the Homebrew version. Um Stone version, if you haven't figured it out by now or if you haven't read it, uh, the, the hops are different on this beer. Stone a wasn't able to get the hops used in the homebrew version, so we had to come up with a, uh, a blend of different hops to kind of approximate what we wanted and what we got uh, on the homebrew version. So that's why you're seeing five different hops. Uh, the Centennial was just first word hopping, and then the, uh, let's see if I can remember them all, uh, the, the Helga... Velma, Calypso, Amarillo, and Simcoe were all flavor aroma additions. The Simcoe, I think, was the lesser end of the proportion. And then I think we ended up bumping up the the Helga and the Amarillo uh, in the beer. Uh, I would have liked to bump up the, the Belma, but they were only able to get so much of it. I've actually used Belma in a homebrew before, but I believe I even shot a... Uh, review of sorts of the the homebrew single hot version of Belma I did, and at least uh, gave my tasting notes on that. So if you want to know what Belma tastes like, smells like, go check that out. But uh, Belma and Helga are definitely two of the newer hops a lot of people haven't had in this beer. Some of you might have not had Calypso. Calypso tends to be more like apple pear sort of notes to it. We're trying to find really fruity hops. Thought a Amarillo uh, Simcoe sort of blend might give some of the more of the character that we want. Sometimes with Simcoe you get some nice peachiness. Amarillo, kind of all over the board. Sometimes you get uh, more just kind of orangey notes. Sometimes you can get something that's a little more like a... Uh, I know Mitch Steele describes it as a... What do you say? Like a uh, Hawaiian fruit punch sort of character. Belma to me is pretty melon forward with uh, some hints of like white grape. Uh, there's a little bit of a dankness to it as well. It tends to be pretty melony, slight strawberry uh, aroma to it. Helga, I, I, I don't know. We just went by what Stone had done in some of their tests and it looked like it was a pretty fruity hop, but it did have a little bit of a, I think it was a, either a grassy or a spicy sort of character going on as well. So those are the hops that we use in this beer. Uh, the Malpeel was kind of a combination of Roberts and Mines, but um, it, it, it's mostly on Roberts' side, at least with the, like the, using a little bit of a Pilsner malt in there. Uh, kind of is a way of lightening the beer, but not doing so by adding sugar. So, um, but color-wise, I think most of the colors coming from the the Munich malt we used. Uh, you know, other than that, it was just two row pilsner, which is pretty light. So I think most of the colors, the uh, oh, the honey malt too. We use some honey malt in there, give it that nice sort of golden color. So I really like the color on this beer. You know, the the heads, you know, fairly fairly bright white on it. Um, I I'm drinking out of the bottle for the first time. I'm actually picking up some toasty coconut on the aroma. The aroma is not as intense as the draft version. Maybe that's possibly why. If you can get this beer on draft, get it on draft over bottle. Draft IPAs are always better. This is no exception. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting um, 
a little more uh, that toasty coconut on on the nose that was not getting at all in the draft version. In fact, uh, it took a while for uh, it took at least a few steps before I started to pick up coconut on the on the draft version, and um, it's a little lighter on the coconut than we like. Um, but I think the bottle has a little more coconut character than the draft. So I don't know if this was a uh, batch variation because there was uh, like four brews. And by four brews, I mean there's three turns of the brewing system, but they fill up one fermenter. So we, we did the batch back in uh, April, or sorry, late May. And then they did another one, I think, uh, two or three weeks later. And then there's two like really recent batches that, uh, that were um, either at very end of June or early July, and then they blended batch I think one and three, and then two and four, and these each of those two batches were blended in the bright tank. They put in more coconut, um, and then I don't know if they say kegged one batch, bottled the other batch. You know I don't know the differences. I got to try. Batch one and three blended off the bright tank before it got bottled uh, t about three weeks ago from when you're seeing this. And uh, uh, the beer's a little, still a little more bitter than we'd like. Uh, we prefer a little less bitterness on it. I, I think that uh, as the beer ages, the, the bitterness level will drop, and I think some of that coconut character will come up. Um, so that's kind of a factor. I, I don't think this beer's quite peaked yet. Uh, I'm not getting as quite as much hop in the aroma uh, on this particular bottle, and maybe that's why I'm picking up more of that coconut character. So you'll uh, have to try the bottle you get. I, I don't know if they're all bottled on the same day with the same batch. So you know, try it as fresh as possible, of course. Uh, make your own decision, kind of where you like it. Uh, but I, I know the bitterness will drop with some time and. And uh, I think the the theory we have is maybe more coconut character will come out. So apparently the beer will be making all of the stone markets that they are in. I don't know about the three recent ones. They are entering, I think it's Alabama, Nebraska, and Kansas, if I remember right. I'm not sure if they'll be sending bottles or kegs there. The other 37 markets, uh, they said, are getting distribution for the beer. I don't know if that's going to mean like one case per store two cases per store or whatever, but um, should be around. I don't know how much draft's getting shipped out either, uh, but try to find it on a draft. If you can find stone beers, likely it will hit at some point. You just got to be on the ball about, you know, picking it up at your local store. You know, ask your beer guy. Maybe they have an idea of when it's coming into their shop. But uh, once it's out of Stone's hands, it's up to whatever distributors are going through in other states. When it comes to Southern California, Stone is – uh, a distributor as well, so I mean it hits stores right away either Monday, Tuesday. So be patient; it should show up. Uh, there are, I'm sure, some shops out there that will sell it online to you, and you can get it that way. But uh, yeah, hopefully, you guys get to try it. Uh, it's it's I can't believe it's finally here. It's so cool to look at this bottle and uh, see my name on it and. Um, you know, see the quote on there, and uh, it's been a it's been a fun process. Uh, big thanks to Mitch Steele and all the Stone Brewing team that that helped out. Uh, learned a lot in the process, and uh, it's been great talking brewing with Mitch. You know, learning some new things, um, seeing how this comes about, seeing how Stone kind of works. I mean, they're a pretty big brewery these days, and you know, kind of getting an idea of what they do on day to day day-to-day -day basis and kind of what the stuff they have to figure out and, you know, how we can add coconut to the bright tank and all this stuff was a, a big challenge for the team. And, you know, it's just kind of neat seeing how that kind of works and how they tackle those, uh, the problems and, and just, just seeing the whole process work is, is fantastic. And, um, you know, thanks to all my friends and family for all the support. Uh, it's been it's been a blast. I mean, I can't believe once the beer came out, how many guys are just pinging me on Twitter saying they're drinking it or um, or Facebook and you know all every, all the social media stuff. And uh, it's been great. It's great to see a lot of friends going out the day of release and going to some either Stone Store or the the new Bistro down at Liberty Station or the Escondido one. Just great time. 
it, it's been fun. Hope you guys enjoy the beer. Uh, it's not going to last long, so uh, my 15 minutes are almost up on this. So uh, I better wrap it up. It's going on far too long. Till get till next time. Cheers.